and down, but here it's empty. And this is the true challenge to the piano player. This would be the Deleuzean pure repetition. Because nothing changes at the level of reality. By reality, I simply mean the actual notes to be played. What changes is just the virtual background, the virtual echo. <coughs> no, you should play, I don't know how this works, I listened to some recordings, I imagined that I heard the difference, but probably because I wanted to hear it. And, but, but you see the art, the art is you repeat exactly the same lines, but in such a way that what changes is not what you hear, but what you don't hear. You should play it once so that this somehow, don't ask me how, resonates in it the other time that it doesn't resonate in it. This, I think, can be perfectly referred to as what Deleuze means by uh, even a quote I have here by uh, that uh, there are significant differences in the virtual intensities expressed in our actual sensations. These differences do not correspond to actual recognizable differences. It is that that the only change is the change of the, of the virtual relations and so on and so on. Uh, so uh, my point is that we can maybe apply even the same to ideology. Maybe the true ideological revolution, much more difficult to achieve, is not to change, this is what I, I was talking, I don't know, yesterday, but it's not just the change in what you explicitly in explicit or but you know like for example as I was talking yesterday if I say you shouldn't do this it has this virtual background do I mean you really should do this do and blah 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 and uh, maybe a much more difficult revolution than to change the explicit rules is the revolution in this background so that I'm saying the same thing but the virtual resonance what the less called virtuality behind is a different one. Again, this is how, in this sense, uh, the radical change is this change where nothing happens in reality. In reality, the same is repeated. But there you discover the radical, pure difference, which is no longer just a difference, concrete difference that you can pick down, but somehow Everything is different. Now let me give you another example, which I like even more, maybe you know it, it's such an evil example that I really love. Uh, it really happened to me, that's why I repeat it all the time. Uh, it's from uh, my experience with Doctor of novel Billy Bathgate. Maybe you know the novel and the movie. Okay, let me tell you what happened to me. I first saw a movie, which I so-so didn't like too much, but my impression was, oh my God, you can see how much better the novel must have been, and how they, f you know, the, the, you know sometimes when you do a movie from a masterpiece, and it's a bad movie, you can still see the traces of the great point of reference, literary, whatever, master, and say, oh my God, what a shame, couldn't they recapture, blah, blah. But then something mysterious happened to me. I said, okay, let's then read the novel. To cut a long story short, the novel was even worse. <laughs> so, something, this would be another way to mention the Deleuzean repetition. We have the real repetition. First, we have the novel, which, okay, let's agree for the sake of argument, you don't have to, that it's a bad novel, and incidentally, I don't have anything against Dr. Of. I Some of his works I like tremendously, like his Rosenberg children's story, did you see it? The Book of Daniel, I think, and so on. No, no, it's a lesser known novel, so nothing against him. But this novel I don't like. Uh, and the movie, I don't know, so it would be Dustin Hoffman, uh, Nicole Kidman, and so on, whatever. Okay, so uh, we have... A failed novel, not too good novel. We have a failed repetition, a movie. Both are 
let's accept it for the sake of, of the argument, both are failures. But the repetition itself, retroactively, generates a purely virtual, spectral presence of the true novel as it should have been. And this is what Deleuze is saying. This is how I read a wonderful passage from Deleuze, the absolute Deleuze. Forget about all that anti oedipal sheet. When I, uh, sheet. When I take power, those books will be burned. You know, I'm really a totalitarian. When people tell me about the Nazis burning books, I say, of course, we should condemn this. But let's not, as they put it viciously, let's not throw out the baby with the dirty water. The principle of burning books was good. They just burned the wrong books. <laughs> I seriously think uh, the two absolute, the less books are, I think, difference and repetition and uh, the logic of sense. They are miracles for me. So look what he writes here. I quote, he speaks about two presents or two series. While it may seem that the two presents are successive, at a variable distance apart in the series of reals, in fact, in fact, they form rather two real series which coexist in relation to a virtual object of another kind, one which constantly circulates and is displaced in them. Repetition is not constituted, is constituted not from one present to another, but between the two coexistent series that this presence form in function of the virtual object. So again, back to Billy Bathgate, the film does not repeat the novel on which it is based. It, it is rather that they both repeat the unrepeatable virtual X, the true novel whose specter is engendered by the passage from the actual novel to the actual to the actual film. And let's be more precise here. Uh, it's not that we should simply conceive the starting point, Doctor of novel, as, as they put it, an open work, full of possibilities which can be deployed later, actualized in later versions. Or even worse, that we should conceive the original work as a pretext which can later be contextualized in different contexts, giving a different meaning, and so on and so on. What is missing here is some retroactive movement, which, another quote that I repeat all the time, but I think this is, again, absolutely crucial to understand Hegel. Uh, 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 a movement described, again, I mention it in, in uh, some of my books, uh, what happened in this movement. It is something which was, as far as I know, first conceptualized by Henri Bergson. In his Two Sources of Morality and Religion, Bergson describes the strange sensation he experienced when the First World War was declared on August 4, 1914. He wrote, in spite of my turmoil, and although a war, even a victorious one, appeared to me as a catastrophe, I experienced what William James spoke about, a feeling of admiration for the facility of the passage from the abstract to the concrete. Who would have thought that such a formidable event can emerge in reality with so little fuss? So what he is dealing with is the following, that when the war exploded, what happened? Before, everybody knew, or act, uh, in, at the level of abstract knowledge, everybody knew about it, expected it. You know how it looked. For the last 20, 30 years, all Europe was obsessed by the prospect of the war. But nonetheless, nobody believed in really can, it really can happen. This is why it was such a shock. It was a clear example of this fetishist disavowal, je sais bien mais quand même. I know very well, but nonetheless, I don't believe it can really happen. Now, what was such a surprise?